Hello everyone. This video is going to be a review of my new Casio G-Shock uh, GWM 500 A-1. Okay. Um, this watch I've had in the past before. Um, it is a, you know, obviously a Casio G-Shock as you see, you know, on the box. It's also what they call a tough solar watch uh, with atomic timekeeping. What that means is that it's um, shock resistant. Um, it's also uh, water resistant to 20 bar, which is um, you know sufficient for light diving um, and uh, you know basically any kind of um, swim sports you would want. Um, it's dust proof as well as um, I don't know if I mentioned shock proof. Um, it's also solar, so that when uh, when outside and on your wrist. Um, the sun's rays actually charge it. What makes this solar cell inside this watch unique though is that it doesn't depend simply on the sun's rays. Any light will do. Now obviously, you know, direct sunlight is the most optimal way in order to um, charge the solar cell. Um, and when outside, really you only need to have it on for five minutes in direct sunlight in order for it to charge fully. Um, through a window, I think it's about 24 minutes if it's sunny outside um but you know really a light from a lamp you know can do the job as well so long as you keep it in direct you know light um you know obviously it takes longer to do that and it doesn't charge quite as much as direct sunlight would do which is why this watch is really meant for people who are going to be outside uh long periods of time uh, i'll get into that you know whom you know really would be you know, this watch for, but, um, yeah, just, uh, that was just a little bit of backstory about the, the tough solar thing. So without much ado, here we go. And there it is. Inside is the, inside the box, the box is just you know, a cardboard box. You know, nothing to save or write home about. This is the international warranty card in this little sleeve. That's the card. Fill out the information. And um, this is the international warranty booklet that, um, you know, talks about, you know, how to utilize the warranty if needed. Um, generally speaking, since this watch is as tough as it is, you know, generally speaking, you probably won't need it, but it's good to have, always have documents. So put that off to the side and there is the watch. Now this watch hosts a litany of um, features. There are four pushers there and there as well. Um, as well as a manual light button for it to loom. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and take this off. Oh, and uh, these are the other documents. Um, as you can see, there's <laughs> quite a bit of them, and that's that's uh, that's due to the you know um, to all of the features that the watch. Um, features. This is the English uh, reader's manual. It's about 80 to 90 pages long. I actually have read this entire thing because if you don't acclimate yourself with this watch, it, it's like a little computer, honestly. You, you have to acclimate yourself with this watch. Um, that is one thing that I will say. It is. Um, it can be very complicated if you don't read the user's manual and you simply try to figure out uh, figure everything out on your own. More than likely, you're going to miss quite a bit. And this watch is um, um, very intuitive once you learn how to do it. But once again, you have to learn. So take the time. You know, it takes maybe ten, maybe fifteen minutes to go through it. And really, that's the last. You know, you'll ever have to utilize it. You could just keep it as a reference. And then all these are just in other languages. You know, as you can see right there. All right, so I'll put that off to the side. I could just read to you the manual, but quite frankly, nobody wants that. <laughs> That's going to be extremely boring. 
So let me just go ahead and take this off of here. Okay, and there she is. All right, not very thick. Um, obviously it has stainless steel bezel with uh, plastic around the pushers, uh, plastic up here surrounding the, the button on the other side as well stainless steel case back screw down what I mean by screw down is that it's screwed down by screws not that you know it screws down okay and a polyurethane strap that is uh, very very tough obviously for this kind of watch it needs to be this strap will definitely last um, you know, the life of the watch, without a doubt. Okay, so as you can see, there's the time, this is the time keeping mode. It is 10.53 on the 20th of uh, December, 2015. Okay. This is the world time setting. As you can clearly see, it's uh, the time city code is LAX, which is Los Angeles. And as you can see, it's three hours from the timekeeping mode that I had in, um, had it on originally. This is for the alarm setting. I didn't set any alarm because my alarm's set through my phone. I don't really need have a need for this alarm. This is the stopwatch. In order to engage the stopwatch, you put it over to there. Then you press this lower uh, right-hand side button. And then it just works like any other stopwatch to stop, reset, or start it, do that. As you can see, it's paused, but once you press this again, it jumps to where it was before. That's how you do laps. In order to reset to zero, you have to press the bottom button again, and then the top, um, the top right button. And then one more mode. This is the countdown timer. I have it preset to 30 minutes because that's what my workouts are. And you simply press the bottom right button and it begins to count down. Okay, now this is, um, that's, that's actually alluding to why, you know, this watch was something that I wanted to get. I wanted to get this watch for workout purposes. And uh, the reason why I would prefer to work out with something like this as opposed to, say, my... Um, my Seiko Diver, which is this watch. The reason why I prefer to um, work out with the Casio as opposed to this one is that there are internal components with this watch that although it has a very robust automatic movement in it, the fact of the matter is the components are small and, you know, decidedly more delicate than that of something like this that doesn't have moving internal components. So, you know, inherently because this has moving components in the interior and this does not, the one that has the solid state components is going to be, generally speaking, in that regard, more secure. So, you know, that's my reasoning for wanting to have this watch for workouts as opposed to wearing this one. Additionally, you know, I happen to play golf and though Though, you know, like I said, that uh, my Seiko is very sturdy. Once again, you press this to stop the countdown and then this to reset to 30. Then, once again, and that's the home time. Um, now, even though the Seiko movement is very sturdy, um, you know, especially playing golf, you know, when you, when you swing and you, uh, you hit the golf ball, that sudden very violent collision with the club and the ball is something that has been known to knock things loose within automatic moments. So, you know, just keeping in, you know, keeping in uh, concert with that, I'd rather just have something like this as, you know, something I'd wear for when I run, when I swim, when I'm mowing the lawn, you know, things of that sort. I could use, use something like this outside that actually has, you know, timekeeping capabilities as well as stopwatch capabilities as well as countdown capabilities that I could utilize and not damage my other 
far more valuable pieces. Um, to me, that's um, of absolute you know, importance. Additionally, the reason why I chose this one as opposed to any, you know, $40 Casio G-Shock from Walmart, the reason why I chose this one is because it also has atomic timekeeping capabilities automatically. What that means is that it actually syncs with um, the atomic clocks, depending on where you are in the world, whether it be uh, the one in, I believe there's one in Japan, there's one in um, England, and there's one in Denver. Um, I'm not sure of the Japan and Eng England one, you know, their exact location, what have you, generally speaking. I I've never even been over in those areas of the world, so that doesn't, excuse me, that doesn't come into play for me per se, but I know there's one in Denver that this does sync with in order to, um, you know, triangulate the exact time at, at any given moment. It's the same exact system that, you know, cell phones use in order, like your iPhone that, you know, the clock is always running uh, accurately. It's the same exact system. Um, that's what this is. So I'm able to, without having to utilize my phone, um, sync all of my automatic watches to this. Now, to me, that's of incredible value because, you know, and I, I've done this a couple of times since I've gotten this watch, and it's a lot easier to do with this than to constantly be looking at my cell phone and hoping that, you know, I get, you know, the right time or what have you. It's a lot easier just to simply go off of this watch, whether it be on my wrist or wherever. Now, in order for this to sync with those satellites or those um, you know atomic uh, clocks all you have to do is when you fall asleep at night put this on the windowsill and just leave it there make sure it has a clear line of sight to the sky you know and just leave it there you know when you wake up in the morning you know it, it'll be you know fully synchronized and this isn't something that you need to do every night this is the kind of watch that, you know, is going to remain, you know, very accurate for long stretches of time so long as it remains, it re, um, retains its charge, its solar charge. So, you know, you can do it once a month, once every couple of months. It, it, it's honestly probably going to do it even when you're not even, you know, aware that it is. So really, it's not even something you need to think about. I'm just simply speaking in terms of when it comes out of the box. Now... You can see it has three subdials here. Um, this subdial to the left is a second countdown, as well as when the stopwatch is going, you'll see it go around quickly. The middle subdial is the power reserve indicator. As you can see, it is currently on the bottom third quadrant. On the top right quadrant, it'll that means it's at full charge. That means right now it's at medium charge, which means I should put it in the in the sun soon or simply go for a walk outside. When it's in the top left quadrant, that means it is on low charge, and subsequently, because of that low charge, it will begin shutting off certain functions for your watch, sort of in a sleep mode, in order to keep it from shutting off completely. Um, okay, and uh, the left one is, uh, it's a mode indicator, okay? Um, now, one of the modes that I have it on currently is that, here, let me put it on my wrist real quick. There we go. Is that when I angle it up like this, up to me, it's not doing it right now. And you know what? It's probably because the power is down a little bit. But anyway, um, if you press the light button down three times, or not three times, but for a full three seconds, um, the mode indicator where it is on right now will show that um, when you angle the watch up to you so you can read the time, the automatic ba the backlight will come on automatically. Now, the great thing with that is that, you know, obviously you don't have to press the button as much and therefore you don't have to wear down the button. Um, the downfall with that is, is that if you do that automatically, the power will seep out of this watch a lot faster. Um, 
Now, obviously, if you're out in the field, if you're out in the sun, that's not going to make much of a difference. But like, as you can tell, I'm in, I'm indoors right now. So it, it, it seeped the power out of my watch pretty quickly. Okay. Um, obviously, you can see it's it's thick. So it's not the kind of watch that you're supposed to wear with like a suit or anything of that sort. Not to mention it being solar, covering it up with a sleeve is not f for the better. You know, it's, it's meant to be worn with short sleeves or with sleeves that are not going to, you know, encompass, you know, the face of the watch. That being said, generally speaking, this kind of watch is meant for you know, um, you know, maybe survivalist types, military, uh, paramilitary, um, uh, police, um, you know, people who are active outdoors, maybe, you know, laborers, day laborers, or, you know, people in kitchens and things of that sort. It, it's really meant to be a utilitarian watch that no matter what you throw at it, no matter what you do to it, it's going to keep on going. And uh, something that is going to be legible at all times of the day, which is going to draw power from being outdoors during the day enough so that, you know, it, it'll continue to be as functional as it is throughout the night as well. Now, um, when I began work, working in an office, actually my actual, my first office gig was when I first got a, a watch exactly like this one. It was the precursor to this watch. And that was, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Anyhow, I was in an office all day long for 60 hours a week. And I was wearing this watch. And anytime I would go out, you know, for a drink or two after, you know, work, I would be sitting in the bar I look down and it'd be blank and it used to drive me insane because you know I would be indoors all the time so it wouldn't be getting the sufficient charge it needed from the sun to keep running so just keep that in mind if you do work in an office or if you're indoors all day long this is not the watch for you because it will go blank it will die I mean, it'll go right back up the minute you put it into a light source, but I'm telling you right now, I mean, it will die. And that's the most frustrating thing when you have such a great watch with so many capabilities um, and you're unable to use it. That's the most frustrating thing. It's meant to be the kind of watch that you wear when you're outdoors, that you're out in the elements at all times. So just keep that in mind. Um, let's see, what other capabilities? Oh, it's a world time watch. Um, I believe uh, it has pre-programmed 48 cities and 31 time zones. So really, you can wear this watch anywhere in the world. You know, it, it, it really is, you know, a total utilitarian watch, you know. Um, and yeah, no, that's uh, that's what it is. That's it's an unsigned buckle. You know, it's very comfortable. It's the perfect watch for me for working out and for syncing my watches. It, it really is. Okay, so yeah, and feel free to like and or comment um, at the bottom, guys. Sorry about the video being so long, but once again, the features on this watch are just innumerable. Like, really, if you're going to get this watch, read the manual. You know, it'll take 10, 15 minutes, but read it, because there are things in there that I definitely missed, you know, that are needed <laughs> to be able to use this watch to its true and full capability. I hope everybody liked this video. Feel free to like and or comment at the bottom. And uh, yeah, happy holidays, everybody.